Hey there, Andrew. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you again. Hey guys, it's Nick here from uh, Toronto Audio Fest 2019. We're here at the ELAC room with the man, the myth, and the legend himself, <laughs> Mr. Andrew Jones. How are you doing today, Andrew? I'm doing fine, thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking out the time to come see us uh, answer a few questions. Let's us get right into it and start off with the Karina. So tell me a little bit about the Karina. Why did you decide to name the speaker Karina, I guess? Well, it started with the Navis, which was originally Argo Navis, right. and uh, headquarters of uh, ELAC is in Germany, North Germany, in a place called Kiel, and it's a great sailing center. It's been like it's well known for that, and Kiel in German is the keel of the ship. So we thought, oh, let's name based on nautical themes, because ah. all of Germany's original products were all numbered. Okay. And that's great for knowing, you know, a bigger number ought to be a better speaker, but it's not very romantic. And so we thought, let's, let's find some names. And so, yeah, nautical. So Argo Navis is a constellation that sailors use to guide. Um, Carina is, I think, Spanish for keel of a ship. Okay. And Vela is sail. And so it goes so on. So just sort of variations on the nautical yes. theme. Yeah. Definitely much easier to differentiate than a bunch of numbers. <laughs> So that's awesome. Uh, and um, I believe like you're a huge advocate just in general for dual concent concentric and coaxial designs. Is there a reason you decided to try out the jet tweeters specifically for this model? Well, partly because ever since I started with uh, Elac, people were like, why are you going to do something with a jet tweeter? And yeah. uh, it just price point wise, it didn't work for what mm -hmm. I was trying to do. Um, but there's been two ranges that Elac's uh, known for in the rest of the world, the, the 240 series and the 400 series, and they were due for um, renovation, let's say. So from a workload point of view, Germany redeveloped the 400 series, which has become called Vela, and I got the job of doing the 240 series as mm -hmm. Carina. So I mean, I'm working with a, a, a jet tweeter, an AMT type tweeter, which I've yes. never done before. So it was Okay. It's exciting, yeah. And what does it do, and <laughs> how do I make it do what I want it, perhaps, to yeah, do? Yeah, for so sure. the genesis of it. Yeah, I guess leading into that, was there any difficulty in designing the, the Carina? Well, I mean, you mentioned concentric drivers. Yeah. It wasn't going to be a concentric driver. Um, couldn't, certainly couldn't do that at that price point yes. with an uh, AMT type tweeter. So it's back to, two, uh, it stays with a two-way system. But what are the characteristics that are different about a uh, folded ribbon tweeter compared to uh, a dome tweeter? That I had to understand, mm -hmm. measure and listen, and decide how am I going to work with that to give me the sound characteristic that is in my head that I want to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned the sound cast characteristic. Is there a certain sound signature you were going with the Carina, with the tuning? <sighs> So everything, when it comes down to it, let's suppose we could develop the perfect speaker, mm -hmm. flat response, you know, perfectly flat yeah. at all angles. Well, that would be omnidirectional. Maybe that's not the perfect speaker because mm -hmm. we don't necessarily want omnidirectional in a real room. Let's say control directivity. But we can't achieve that. We can't achieve that perfection, especially at lower price points. So everything is a compromise. Absolutely. Which compromises do you choose to try and fix, and which do you go, yeah, next time, yeah. next model, <laughs> next price point for some of the other things. So I have an idea of what I want to do, and it's from years of experience of listening to speakers I've designed and other people's speakers in lots of rooms around the world, and I get an idea of what I want to do. So it starts with measurement. I have to understand from a technical point of view what it is and isn't doing. But then it's my choice as to which parts of that I try and improve and which I have to leave alone. So there is a flavor always in what yeah, you're trying to achieve. Absolutely. The key is how do you judge what that flavor is since you don't necessarily know what the recordings are supposed to be. Yes. You know what you'd like them to be <laughs> or what you've heard them to be on better systems, let's say, so you want that, a characteristic of that in the lower cost system based on having heard that recording, but you're certainly right. not saying this is what the recording is This is the is definite, to be. yeah, for sure. 
And uh, in terms of, I guess, power requirements, what's recommended for the Karina and what do you personally use to drive them? <laughs> the Alpine <laughs> gear, so <laughs> I've got lots of power available. Yeah. I just don't like to be caught out. But of course I do use other things like our DS101. Yep, um, in tiny the, little guy. So I know, and I've got a Yamaha integrated. Mm -hmm. I, you listen on a few different things to okay. understand what it's going to be doing. Um, I always like more than little power, just so that I can... That extra headroom. Yeah, the times when you want there. to play loud, but that's not very often. Right, of course. And uh, in terms of price range, what are we looking at for the Karina, and is it available currently? Karina should be available. I wish I remembered what the Canadian price is. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I have to look at one website. Yeah. <laughs> I know the US price is $1,200 a pair. Oh, $1,200, okay, awesome.